Hey guys, this is Matteo and today we are going deep into the rabbit hole. There's one IP adapter node that I kept hidden from you. It's called Mad Scientist and gives you a level of fine tuning uh, over the IP adapter that was impossible before. So buckle up Alice, time to eat that mushroom. We talked already about style transfer, but I've added a new weight type called Precise. Let me remove the Mad Scientist for now and replace it with an advanced node. In the weight type, I select Style Transfer and as reference, I'm using this drawing. In the prompt, I'll just write Illustration Close-Up Portrait of a Woman High Quality Detailed. And okay, let's try. This is good already, it took the style very well, but uh, there's also some bleeding of the composition. There are a lot of flowers, for example, uh, this might be what you want, but it's all about control, right? So let me duplicate the whole generation and in a second IP adapter, I will select uh, style transfer precise. I'll bring the preview near the other one, okay? If I generate now, you'll see that there is far less bleeding of the elements inside the reference image. Uh, we still have a flower in the hair, but better than before. Let's try with another seed. Yeah, in this one she's like inside a bush, uh, while the new method uh, was able to exclude most of the original composition, but still keep the style intact. Again, the old weight type might still be better uh, if you want a little contamination, but the new one can be useful, especially when the reference is very different from what you are trying to generate. What if I need even more control over the style transfer? Well, uh, there is where the mad scientist comes into play. I'm creating a new generation, but this time I remove the IP adapter advanced and use a mad scientist instead. I reconnect all the pipelines, uh, set the weight to 0.7, weight type uh, precise, and in the text field I write 3 colon 2.5 comma 6 colon 1. Don't worry about that right now, we'll see how it works later. Uh, for now, let's just check the difference. As you can see, the new image got less confused on the hair and the clothing is also better defined. So how does this ordeal work? Very quickly, during sampling we are hijacking two specific blocks of the unit. There are 12 blocks with cross attention, uh, the style layer is index 6, uh, so we target only that one and the result is generally fine but we still get some bleeding of the composition because uh, the role of each block is not that black and white. Now, it was already possible to send the same image as negative conditioning. Uh, that helped uh, avoid bleeding and uh, the result was already pretty good. But now we are surgical with the embeds. What I'm doing with the new approach is to send the same image as negative conditioning only to the composition layer, which is index 3. Uh, this way we are basically telling the model to use the style of the reference, but not the composition. Now, if we check the mad scientist again, everything should make sense. In the text field, we have 3, which is the composition layer, and 2.5, which is the strength. Then I have 6, that is the style layer, and 1, that again is the strength multiplier. If you use this syntax together with the style transfer precise weight type, the mad scientist will take care of sending the positive style conditioning together with a very strong negative composition conditioning. It's important to understand that in this modality the layer 3 becomes a negative conditioning. If I set the strength to the composition layer to say 1.5 and generate again, I'll get closer to the second image. And if I set it to 1, it will be identical. I haven't made a lot of tests, but between 2 and 3 seems a good compromise. 
This can be very useful when, for example, you have the reference of a man and you want to generate a woman. I need to remove illustration from the prompt and I'm also setting the weight to one uh, to all IP adapters uh, to make the difference more dramatic. As you can see in the last image, we got rid of the mustache. Let me try to lower the weight to two uh, in the composition and now we have a nice progression. This works very well with SDXL and to some extent with SD15. Okay, now I can see your gears spinning. I said we have 12 blocks we can work with in the cross attention. What stops us from targeting other layers instead of just three and six? So I prepared this workflow. In the Med Scientist, I have selected linear weight type. In the text area, I have listed all the layers from 0 to 11 and they all have a weight of 1. If I generate, this is the same result uh, I would get from a standard IP adapter node. If I set the weight to all layers to 0 except index 6, it will be the same as style transfer. But I can send a little of the reference also to index 5, for example, which is also a strong conditioning. So I'm setting a weight of 0.7 or I can get some of the composition back. So I set index 3 to 0.5 and now I'm getting closer to the reference image. And for even more power, you can combine multiple nodes. All you need is another mad scientist, connect a new image and connect all the pipes. Now I set to one of the layers in the first IP adapter, except layer 6 to 0.3. Then in the second, I set all to zero, except the style to one. If I generate now, I get almost everything from the first reference and only the style from the second. Yeah, pretty cool. So one last thing, image to image. We've talked about image to image already in a previous video, but I added compatibility with COSXL edit and that helps a lot with uh, style transfer and image to image. Well, at least if you have all the VRAM. This is a simple COSXL workflow. I included it in the example directory of the IP adapter. As a reference, I have the drawing from before and as base image, I'm using the Mona Lisa. In the IP adapter, I set the precise style transfer. The results are interesting and the trick is to play with these two CFG values. If I increase the second, I get closer to the Mona Lisa, but I lose some of the style. So you need to strike a balance. Also, in this instance, the conditioning comes mostly from the main checkpoint. Uh, so you might have better luck using a lower strength IP adapter model, like standard. And as you can see, the workflow reacted a little better and I can probably increase the second CFG now. Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about today. I find it amazing that uh, after almost a year since the IP adapter models were uh, released, uh, we are still finding ways to improve them. I think that we rely too much on whatever new technology comes out and we forget to actually understand what we already have. Anyway, that's all for today. See you next time. Ciao.